Go ahead, Bill. Oh, God. Get it done, Bobby. Come on in. Is he not? What is he doing? I don't know. I'm here. I had to tell somebody to be quiet. I'm not in a quiet room. Go ahead and intro it. This is the Cold World Podcast. I went through all this time to set up the Cold World Podcast. Oh, okay. Jeff Coleman is the Cold World Podcast. Here we go. I, I didn't know. Was, so we're going to be, it's supposed to be the Volunteer Road Show right now. Welcome, welcome to the Volunteer Road Show and Cold World Podcast Special Edition, the new coach alert, new coach edition. So we we had to jump on because we there's a lot of chatter, of course, on social media. You gotta love social media uh, about our new about our new coach. So we have to get on and give you our opinions, our takes. I wish we if we, if we have it if it's live. Uh, we want to take some questions. I want to hear what the people have to say uh, about this to get the feedback so we can touch on this. And I, I really wanted to have time to touch on the Jeff Fisher thing, but I'm glad we don't have to deal with that right now because we have another coach. Big Worm, now you're in Knoxville. Give me the feel. What do, you, what do you think? What's your first take on this? Well, I mean, when I, when I heard about the hire, you know, I'm not going to say when I heard about the hire. We know, hold on. We know when you heard about the hire because you said this yesterday. You said this hire. yesterday and you wouldn't tell who it was. Hey, I heard about the hire today. No, you didn't. Um, first thing that hit me was it's the hire that I knew he was going to do because it's the easiest hire for him to hire someone that he knows and trusts and he's seen him do a great job at his profession. Hold on, shout out for first of all, shout out to Deuce. Fred White was the first one who called this. He said this right after, literally right after Danny White got the job. He said, be on the lookout for Josh Heupel. So I'm going to give him his shout out, his credit on that. He called that thing almost immediately. But <laughs> go ahead. And, and 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 the first thing I thought about of it, like when I said, you know, he's he's getting someone to come here that he knows he can trust. And that's the first and foremost thing you want to have as your coaches, your AD, your sport. You want to trust each other. You know, it's almost want to be like a, a more than just a partnership, you know, a, a friendship, family situation. And he's been with this guy for a while. And everybody should have saw this coming from miles away. You know, there is no coach out there that's in their position is looking right now that say, hey, I can take that position right now and change it and, and, and come out of the hole or whatever. Well, there's not many big coaches that are in their profession right now that's going to do that. And um, when the AD came in and I saw it a mile away too, and then when someone told me that's who they was going to bring here, it, it wasn't a surprise to me. I like to hire because of that first and foremost thing right there is trust. Okay. So when they told you this yesterday, let's go ahead and touch on that too. You knew this yesterday and you didn't say anything, but I'm, I'm going to let that go. But you hit on a very, very key point because I think context is key. Understanding where we are as a program and what the AD and the head coach are going to have to navigate us through. I think him bringing in someone that he didn't really know, somebody he didn't trust, was going to make that situation a little bit more difficult. So now I think that it, with that combo, just again, to what you said, I think them having a the trust factor with, with each other and knowing what, I think he was real honest with them about, look, this is what we're facing. <laughs> what are you going to sign up? We're going to get through this together and they, because they know each other. So I think that's a little bit more difficult for somebody else that's, you know, qualified or more qualified to sign up with. And like I said, I'm not unhappy about the hire. And there's some other things, you know, we, we're going to later on talk about, what that means, like with, with T's situation and him not getting the job and how many people feel about that. Just a, a lot around that, but just got talk about the guy we have right now. And um, like I said, with not getting into the his his culture everywhere he's coached and everything else. But what I what I have seen about him from and what I what I know of him before, watched him play, watched him coach, you know, from afar. But he he, he seems to be somebody who can develop players and he seems to be good at drawing up an innovative offense and executing and calling plays on that. That's, and I think for right now, that is a bonus and a plus right now. You know, that's the first and foremost thing that I said and a coach that we're going to have to have here with our coach here at Tennessee to be able to compete 
in the SEC is getting an offensive minded coach as well. Someone that can put up some points, you know, and he's, he's has a history of doing well at that. And you've seen it over the years with his offenses. They've been good. They're producing points. They're producing a lot of great situations on offense. Quarterbacks, receivers, you know, it's, it's, it's huge here in the SEC to have that combo to be able to stretch the field, even if it's trick plays or anything like that. We have to have someone that keeps everybody, not, not just everybody, I'm going to say Alabama on their toes because that's the team that you have to have your – your bar is set for it to be able to compete and beat those guys. There's nothing else that you should be succeeding, thinking about when you come here. My job is to get to the point where we can compete with the SEC schools. And, and that's a good point because when you have, and obviously right now and with some of the departures and just what we have over the last couple of years, you have a talent deficiency. And the way to overcome that is being innovative. And, you know, we try to walk out there and again, not, not, not down, you know, down in Coach Pruitt, but we try to have a pro-style offense, you know, just a by-the-board type team to go out there and beat teams that we were not as talented as and we weren't out scheming a whole lot. So that's something that I, I think right now you, that's going to be real key for us to be able to have some – to overcome some of those deficiencies until we do catch up is to be able to out-scheme, out-coach people and catch them off of their t- – you know, keep on, um, on their toes about what we're doing. So that that's going to be real key. Yeah, that's the biggest part of it, JC. And another thing that I was thinking about, too, is, you know, a lot of fans are, are really upset with the hire because, you know, he's not a, a big name or anything. And, and, and most of the thing that I heard the fans asking for, we don't need to hire another offensive assistant or defense coordinator, offense coordinator. And we need someone with head coaching experience. And we finally, we got that. And they're still upset about that. And that's something that when, when you said that earlier that, you know, when you posted um, that they're going to be upset regardless who we hire. And, and I get that, guys. I mean, we had to hire a coach that wanted to come here. Right. This is, in a sense, if you guys don't realize that, people keep saying that Tennessee is not a, a, a great place to come coach. Tennessee is a big job to fill. I don't care where it is. It still is the SEC. You're talking about the number two winning in school in the conference. Yeah. You know, and, and and if you think about this, JC, if we would have kept, that's say Coach Foreman would have stayed in there. Do you know if those same 9, 10, 11 wins a year were still in place, where Tennessee would be ranked in the SEC winning in schools? Right. Number one. Yeah, but you know, we'd be number one. Right. We If we continue that trajectory. So, but to that point, and I'm going to go back to something else. I'm going to give him another shout out. Dude said to, to what our new coach actually is and does. It, it's going to take to be a middle of the pack SEC team. You need to put up 35, 36 points to be at the top. You need to put up closer to 40 points where it's not the old, you know, defense wins championship thing. You can't even say that anymore because if you look at the type of Alabama didn't have a great defense this year. They're, like none, none of the teams really, it's so hard to, have a great defense against these high-powered, innovative offenses. You need someone like that. I think the key for him, and this is what I keep, you know, people are already dismissing the, the, the hire, but I'm like, let's wait and see who he hires as uh, his, his assistant coaches. What does his staff look like? That's going to be really key from a recruiting standpoint and from a development standpoint as to who does he bring in to coordinate that defense? Who does he bring in? to call the plays, who, to, to develop these kids. And that that is the key. We've had a lot of talent, but we need to develop them. Take these three stars, make them four. Maybe take the four, make them five. Take these five stars and make them first round draft picks and superstars. Somebody that can do that while putting up points. And I think, again, there's nothing out there that says he can't do it. That's, that's the thing. It's like, I know people are doubting it, but I don't see anything that says he can't do that to be able to be a Senate about the hire. And that you hit it perfectly right there. Develop. Development is what's key to being successful in the SEC. When those kids get on campus, those stars are thrown 
out the window. They don't mean nothing. And if anything, the five star has it the worst because every kid that's on that um, roster, they're going to test your five star man. Yep. <laughs> right, gonna... and, the, and the upperclassmen test that too. They make it hard. It's, it's hard on them five star kids. Oh, yeah. Think about, yeah. And and we've seen it many times, man. When we play, and it still happened to me. I guarantee you, you go to Alabama right now. They do the same thing. They're going to test you and see if you're really a five star. And they're going to take them stars away from you until you earn those five stars back. And that's what it's going to take. You, you're right, man. They got to get, you know, he's going to hire some coaches around him that's going to be able to develop the kids. And, 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 and I'm hoping that he let the coaches develop the kids. And what I mean by that is let those coaches coach based on how you hire them to come in here with their ability to do that to those kids. It shouldn't be a micromanaged situation when these coaches are coaching. I understand if they're not doing their jobs mm -hmm. and if they're not doing their jobs, you need to get somebody else to replace them with their jobs. And that's something I didn't see in the past. And I'm not knocking them down with Coach Pruitt and some of these guys. You know, I almost think there was more of a buddy situation with some of those guys there because some of those guys shouldn't even been on the staff after looking at some of the production they was putting on the field. And I'm going to jump on it with the O-line, D-line. Yeah. is two of the most important parts of a football team. It doesn't matter what level of ball it is. Without those two components being successful, the rest of it don't even matter. And I agree. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm gonna go ahead and stay and just I want to give some recognition to some of our some of our volunteers and who are on that staff. Look, two of the positions that were some of our best talent and performed the best last year was a running back, the wide receiver position. You know, coached by Jay Graham, T. Martin. And I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna lob it off the backboard. We're not gonna spend. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it right now because I don't want it to be fresh. And I want to think through what I want to say about. T. Martin situation. And I I will say, I do not think he was given a, a even with the program, I think that was more egregious and more of an oversight. You with the new guy coming in, you have to expect him to go again, go with somebody he know and in, in, in that type of situation. But I and even now that not even giving him a look. And especially the way he his his group performed. And the way he, when, when, when it came time to make sacrifices, he's sacrificing money, what he's done for this university. And this gets to my bigger point for me about our fan base. And I know some people are going to like it. People are going to be mad about it. But our fan base treated T like shit. They've, had, they've done it for a long time. And it just gets to a bigger point for me about how we react and what we expect and what we do as a fan base. So just want to say that. And again, I probably said more than I wanted to say about that today, but you know, it's what it is. And, and, you know, I, I'll say this to that situation too. And I, I understand the passion. I understand that, you know, they care. I know that we all care. I mean, I'm a form of all, I'm a fan now, you know, and, and, and I know a lot of situation that goes on when it comes to being a coach, when it comes to be a player. There's two totally situations when you're coaching a player. You can be the coach, tell a kid to do this, and the kid didn't do what you told him to do, and you look bad because the kid thinks he knows everything. That's where I still buy in the point where I hate the star system, Jeff. <laughs> They're right. giving these kids too much freedom where they haven't earned it yet. Well, I, I – you – First of all, I do not like to start a system. Recruit the kids, sign the kids, get them there, let them play. But without that, then all these 24-7 ESPN rankings, everybody, no. it's about the money for that and having the shows, having the games. And I, I know we sound like some old, like, get off my lawn type guys with this, but I don't like I, – I, I didn't like it when we were in it. Like, it started to get really big around. I, that was, like, the real start of that, like when we were coming out. So it's not like we didn't, we weren't part of it. And I didn't like it. I didn't, I never looked to see who else of these stars. Like we, another shout out to the class of 94. We're the last number one class that signing class that Tennessee's had. But I, I didn't know that until after the fact. I didn't look at it and see who, what other stars were signing. I'm going where everybody else going. Or 
anything like that. It's just one. It's just like recruit me. Where I'm gonna either sign or not play. I mean, I, like whatever the case may be, it just sets up a bad situation. That, that's you know. You gonna let that slide, Billy? I mean, it's facts though. He, there's nothing. He you gonna let that slide, Billy? It's a fact. What, what let slide. It was the number one class. I don't care about that. No, to that point, I'll say, and my classmates may get mad at me, I say the 97 class is the best class that and they've I, I, I said that also. And it's, it's, a, it's a fact. I mean, it's, it's hard to argue with that. We were the number one. What I've always said about those classes back yeah. then, I said, yeah, I'm going I'm to start it over and let you understand what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Class of 94, they started that. They started something that Tennessee had never had, ever. And I don't care what the old heads want to say, I get it. They started something where it produced something that created what was called the next class. So you, and you book in, it's 94, 95, 96, 97, those were two exactly. books. And, and everything come, that was in between, there were two great classes in between that we just kept stacking and putting exactly. in. Exactly. 94 came. started it. And what I say about my class, we just end up being the, the building block that produced a lot of guys that became a lot of leaders. Yep. And when you have that, it produces what called the next and the next, and it trickles on. And when we got the class of 97, now that's when we became what I call elite status. It took us over the top. It took us over the top, point blank. It was to the point where, here, we were what Alabama is today when it came to recruits. If a recruit came to Tennessee back then, they either was coming or we was telling them we didn't want them to come. <laughs> That's how it was. If you was a recruit, we didn't care about what you did on the field because guess what? We all knew you were good. We didn't, have to, we didn't know that. I mean, if you was coming to Tennessee, there's a reason why they brought you on a recruiting trip. Right. And then to that point, where look who came in 98, 99, two, and it just continued on after. So not to have a nostalgic moment, but yeah, that's that's what that is. And, and, and it's going to take a little bit uh, for like this, this new coaching staff that coming in. It's going to take them, you know, get a couple of great recruiters and player coaches to start creating that, that vibe with the kids. And it's going to happen quick. And right. as far as the kids coming to Tennessee, I don't think we're going to have an issue. I think the kids are coming because they know they'll be able to play. They know there's an opportunity at hand. If they come in here and produce, they can play right away. And if any recruiter can't use that as a weapon to help them, they don't need to be here at Tennessee recruiting. And here. And I'll tell you something. Like, what was it? Um, I know someone was brought up. I've seen it on Facebook a lot where they are saying, why didn't – we give they give T Martin a chance to be the head coach. Right. I, I'll go ahead and start off the reason I think. I think that it's a bad look in a sense with NCAA first and forehand. He's on the part of a staff that's got in trouble. I'm not saying that T had anything to do with that, but right. it's always that situation where they always call it guilty by association and if you have him as your head man they're automatically gonna still saying think it's the mcdonald's bag still getting handed <laughs> well I, I agree with that to a certain extent but i do think they want to prop because i saw something where they're you know trying to keep jay trying to, trying to keep team too but i think it's bigger than that i think it's if you look at it look at the and again context is key um six, was it 16 whatever when you know when, when Pruitt was hired we have the AD who's making the hire was the former head coach, Petit. And when he didn't get a real look or a real shot or a real interview, the optics of that are people like he didn't even, they unfairly look at it as that he didn't even get the shot when his, his guy was, was, you know, making the hire. And I think, again, the optics... Did we lose Jeff? I'm not sure. Did we? Yeah, he's he's frozen. Go ahead and keep talking. Pick up well, where he goes. I think this. I don't think this is a home run, Billy. 
but I think it's a walk off double. I think it could be, you know, it could be a good hire. And I don't know if it's going to be a good hire, but I know that no matter how many times we comment in the comment section, no matter how many times we post a meme, no matter how many times we, we as fans say something, it isn't going to change the success or the failure with this coach. So Nothing here. we can say is going to affect anything. Yeah, so this is what I'm going to say about the situation there. Like the home run hire or the whatever, the worst hire or anything like that. We don't know that until we give this man a chance to do his job. We all know as a fan base that we're going to have an issue this next year or two until we get some players to come in here and do the job. Yeah. We got to stop expecting it instant success they're thinking because Hugh Freeze had instant success at Liberty that we can have that same success with a coach here no it's not like that guys you got to go back and look at what Hugh Freeze inherited at Liberty they had a whole bunch of seniors a great senior class that's been playing together for a long time we haven't had that here at, this, at, at University of Tennessee in a long time when it comes to leadership on the field. Coast of Carolina, same situation. And I guarantee you this coming up year that you won't see the same success at Coastal and Liberty next season. I agree with you. Until we give these coaches a chance. You know, I, and I think we should keep you know, T, J, you know, all the coaches didn't have any involvement in that situation. Don't throw everybody out because we still need to keep some of those coaches to keep these recruits or know these kids that's on this team. You know why I didn't want T Martin? I didn't want it for him because of our fans. Well, T, Personally, I, think, I don't think it would have been fair to him to put him in right now after all this. I personally think T would have loved to have the job just so he can prove everybody wrong. I personally think so. If if it would be crazy not to think that he didn't want the job because, heck, I take the job. I don't care what the fans would think about me or whatever. I'm here to do a job. I'm here to win ball games and create great young men. That's what I'm here to do. I'm here to do that. And that's not my job to do what the fans tell me to do. I have to listen to what my AD tell me. I have to listen to how the kids are reacting. That's what they hired me here to do. And I understand that the fans say that, hey, without no fans, there's no be that. I get that, guys. But don't nobody come to your job telling you to fire you. Well, I tell you, we've, I, we've said this to each other in private. We've got the best fans in the country. Uh, if you're, tw if you're 25 years old and you're a Tennessee fan, you haven't seen any winning. So to be a Tennessee fan and you're young, you're great to me in my book. A lot of the young kids get a lot of bad rep, but our young kids have never seen a winning program, but we've also got some of the worst fans in the country. There was one guy that's commented on this video. For an example, he says, unfollowing everything that says Vols. First of all, I call BS on that because he just commented. But anyway, he says, I'm unfollowing everything that says Vols. You guys are great, but I am totally checked out. Bull crap. We start winning, he'll be back. He's, he's probably not ever leaving. Not he, 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 he's one of those that I'm – how many did we say this year? We're going, I'm, I'm not watching another game in the next live stream we have. They're commenting and complaining about the play calling. How do you know? You, you said you just quit watching. So I don't have, I don't have uh, very much patience for these kind of comments. But it just it's just a – kind of an anecdote about what I'm saying about the worst fans. He said, you guys are great, but I'm totally checked out. The fan reaction seems second only to Shiano announcement. <laughs> I think there may be some truth to that. I mean, our, our fans aren't happy about this. We do have some of the worst fans, but because we have bad fans, that's not going to keep me from being a fan. There's nothing you can do to keep me from being a fan. I don't care how stupid our fans are. Or how great they are. That's not affecting anything. Well, the ship shall keep floating, whether they want to be or not. I just say, I'm still going to be a fan. I love watching them, man. I like. I mean, they're they're not up, they're down, but 
I'm still going to watch them and hope that they, they become successful one day. I do know that is not going to happen overnight. I do know that we have a huge hill we got to climb. I do know that this coach is going to do the best to his ability to make Tennessee successful. Um, I do know that these coaches don't come here to lose. You know, they understand that these coaches still got to coach against other coaches and these other coaches don't want to lose either. So I get what the fans are saying. I just wish the fans had some realistic understanding how this stuff works. It's not a instant success, especially in the SEC. Yeah. I, I think the, the dude that had the, the, the seven, the winning seven game parlay ticket has caused more degenerate gambling or the guy that posts on Facebook where he, you know, put money on a 250 to one odds horse and one money. That's sort of the analogy of what I'm using about our fans. We're unrealistic. We think that if, if we're not a one hit wonder or a two hit wonder, or we don't have the next Nick Saban or whoever it is, we need to go find that one. Do you know how many coaches are one, one year coaches are successful? Like some of these guys that you, they use as an analogy, they're bringing up anomalies, not the norm. It is so rare. And they said, well, if they can do it, why can't our coach do it? Man, it's an amalgamation of so many things besides just the coach. We've got a culture issue here. That's what we've talked about with Texas and my it we've got a lot of it's not just X's and O's on the field. We've got a lot of problems that's gonna be more than just the coach to turn this thing around. And I think those one hit wonders, um, have ruined a lot of a lot of this. Nick Saban, everybody thinks, well, we'll just go get a Nick Saban. He's once in a lifetime. Heck, even Kirby Smart's pretty rare. He's not won a national championship. Mm -hmm. These things are rare, but they bring them up as if they can do it, why can't we? Well, there's more to it than just the coach. Now, I do think the coach has a lot to do with it and can affect a lot of things. But we're we're way beyond needing just a coach. We got a lot a lot of problems. Well, here I'm gonna tell you what it is. We're way behind on players. That's it. That, that's that, that's probably it too. Because look, once Nick started winning, probably his first national championship. That, that you know how much easier it becomes to get a player once you've won a champ. And then when you've won two, it even becomes easier. Then when when you won three, then four, then five, then 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 so on. I'm gonna bring Jeff in here in just a second. Let me uh, let me it's get this going. Much easier. You know, especially when you win the national championship. All right, here's Jeff. When you're winning, everybody wants to come to the school. It's totally different. Like people think that Nick had an instant success at Alabama. No, he didn't. He struggled too until he had what's called consistency. And Nick started winning consistently. The kids start coming. I mean, every year he got better and better. The kids kept coming, kept coming. And it's the same thing that happens at every school. You got to have some horses. You got to have some dogs that's ready to play football. And Tennessee haven't had enough of those in the last 10 years. It's been a while since we had a whole group of class that saying that, okay, these kids, by the time they become seniors, we're going to be really, really good. We haven't had that. And, and once we start seeing any, and you can tell, based off of these last few years of the kids that's been, let's say, drafted in the NFL from Tennessee, there haven't been a lot. There haven't been a lot. What's you up? don't look at some of these other schools. You're on, Jeff. Been, you oh, say, it just came me back. Like, and I was sitting in the room joining. Now it put me back to the please wait. For the All right, I'll put you back in. So. Sorry, Billy. All right, go ahead, Billy. Sorry. And you see these schools like Clemson. You see this Alabama, LSU. You see these guys that are winning, and you see the amount of kids that are drafted off their team. Now, you go look at our team and based off how many kids that we have drafted off of our team, and that tells you what kind of players we had over there. 
There may be a couple that get lucky and get drafted when they go, they have a heck of a workout because yes, we've had some good players, just haven't had any developed players. And that's what we're missing. We're missing some dogs. We haven't had that in a while, guys. And that's what Alabama is getting year in, year out. They're getting the best of all the players that's available to college football. And until Tennessee start getting, filling that gap of getting some of those great players that Alabama and Clemson are getting, Tennessee's going to be sitting where they're at for a long time. It takes great players to make that better. And, and I'm sorry, I mean, because if you have, let's say, two good players in every class, that's not going to work because you're going to have some two-star good players and three-star good players. And for Alabama don't get 35-star players, guys. Alabama still, they're getting two stars. They're getting three stars. But, but you know what they're doing? Yeah. They're developing those kids. Yep. Developing those kids. And when those kids get on campus and they see how those five-star upper class guys are working, guess what those two-star guys are doing? They're mimicking what those five-star upperclassmen are doing. I want to do it just like that. Jeff Coleman. When I saw Jeff Coleman dip and rip and swim moving and spin moving, I wanted to do the spin move better than Jeff. I wanted to do it better. I wanted to do it that way because I knew if I can do it just as good as Jeff, I can get my ass on the field. Right. And if and he's on the field, guess what? By the time I become a junior or a senior, we good because I'm doing everything that he was successful doing. We got the same product on the field. We don't have any drops when I come on the field. It's the exact, exact same intensity when the backups came in. And we don't have that at Tennessee at no position. Absolutely. Sorry for the technical difficulty. Starting. You just said something, man. It's like not only mimicking the upperclassmen, but getting that trust of those upperclassmen. You know, once I understood that Steve White trusted me to be out there with him, little, little, all these other guys that I, I came in, uh, you know, aspiring to be like or to, you know, attain, you're watching how they went about their business. Those are great, but I am totally checked out. Go ahead. I, I, I don't know what's going on here. Go ahead. Keep going. No, but yeah, that's a great point. Man. And that's, you know, we definitely have to, that's something that the, the new coaches that we have to get back to if we're going to be successful. I want to see, do we have any questions out there? Do I, I want to hear from some of the people not to, because, you know, we do a lot of Yeah, I'll go through. Let me look and see. I, let me check YouTube. I know we had some people over here on YouTube. Uh, Matt, 7397, Tennessee is in a situation where NCAA will hit really hard on us, plus the fact that we have bad culture around the program. We wouldn't get a top-level hire because of it. No offense to Josh Heupel. Um, let's see. A lot of people saying I'm, hi on here, but I'll, I'll check Facebook. I don't know how serious – I mean, the allegations are serious, but I don't know how hard we're going to get hit with that because we self-reported. We've already, you know, got ahead of a lot of that. So I don't know how bad that's going to be. And I'm glad that uh, – that I forgot what his name was you just said. Like, he said no disrespect to Hypo, but Hypo is a – like – is, is he Bob Stoops? No. Is he some of the other coaches out there? No. But he's a, he has a proven track record, uh, has a proven record as a coach and as a, someone who can have, a, again, an innovative offense. So, you know. Well, we got a couple of great comments. Cliff Lafferty says, I've been a fan since the legend coach John Majors and will die of all. I'm behind the new coach, and I love you guys' show. When the Vols play on Saturday, I turn down the TV and listen to you all just like I did Josh Ward. Frederick Johnson says, you start getting better players when you start putting players in the NFL in the first two rounds. And um, John Justin Sanday said, going to take time to get the old uh, cloud off out of Knoxville. <laughs> and what I want to, I I get because again we're we'll get we're guilty of it because we're from that era. I want us to kind of put that to the side for a minute because everything that happens and we do that we talk about we keep drawing upon the golden days and it's it's hard to move forward when you keep doing that. 
we, we got to put it, it's, it's never going anywhere. Our tradition is our tradition is not going anywhere. But give someone a chance to be successful on their own and then start comparing that because you can't do it the same way we did it. Now, there are some core things like what you said about building talent, having that pipeline. There are some core things that you that just go through any era, but it's we can't bring the 90s back just like that. Let, let's build a new 2020 and beyond, 2021 and beyond. And, get, I, and again, I've been guilty of this myself of, just immediately jumping on somebody who came in. Like I don't want to wait five years like you guys talked about, but I, I do want to give the person a chance to get on campus, to sign a class, to go through a spring, to go through a fall, to coach a season, to do that a, a couple of times. And let's, let's start grading him along the way. Well, how did we do this? How did I, you know, I don't like grading the classes, but yeah, did we get a good class? Cool. Did we have a good spring, right? How did the guys look in the fall? How did we look this first game? Like, like, let's look at it from that perspective, because we didn't get in the dumps overnight. We're not going to fix it overnight. So just, you know, give it a little bit of time. Well, I'm, I'm still on the same situation as far as we need players. And I, I, I go back to the golden age and when we was there, because I'm saying it because the traditions or how we was coached, it doesn't change. It all depends on the players. The, the, the development of the players is what's changed at Tennessee. You know, I go back and I look at a couple of kids that were drafted out of Tennessee, first rounders. You go look at Derek Burnett, Alvin Kamara. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and I'm going to tell you guys this right here. Derek was a three-star. Wasn't he? he was a three-star. Yeah, neither one of those kids developed when they was at Tennessee. You guys look at the fact with Derek Burnett. You, you, yes, he broke Reggie White's sack record. But I tell you this right now, we had guys that would have broke Reggie White's sack record if he was playing 60, 70 snaps a game. Well, that's that's and, and the reason I'm saying that is because when I played, or even when Reggie played, Reggie wasn't on the field that long. Right. You know, Reggie, you know, I, I want to say maximum 30, 45 snaps, 50 snaps, if that. And I'm saying that's not getting off the field a lot. When I played, we got off the field a lot. Or we didn't have linebackers that had 100 tackles. Right. Yeah, and to your point, you know, like Steve, again, Steve White, Jonathan Brown, Leonard, those guys put up great sack numbers for, for the time they're out there on the field. They didn't play the whole game because – we were playing 25, 30 steps behind them, you know, somewhere between 15 and 30 snaps behind these guys. So, yeah, I, I could see any one of them breaking a set record if they played 60, 70 snaps a game. Let's go look at it. Jonathan Brown and Leonard Little played on the same team and DN at the same time. And you go look at where those two guys rank at on the sack records with Tennessee. If Leonard wouldn't have moved to middle linebacker, yeah. Gosh, man, that would have saved me and you both a bunch of double <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. And, and it, 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 it just blows my mind that I wish those kids would have been developed. They would have been even, you know, I think those kids would have left a lot sooner if they were developed a little bit more. Because I still think that Derek Burnett was, he was ready for the NFL his junior year. He could have gone out there and did that because he had already had that intangibles already. Whoever taught him. I don't know if it was our coaches or whatever, but when he got to the NFL and Alvin got to I called it. I told him them both of them will be offense and defensive player of the year. Yeah. No one believed me. I said, hey, I'm telling you, those are those two kids are seasoned. They're ready for the NFL. We haven't had that at the University of Tennessee in a long time where I can say that um Harrison Bailey will one day be a first-round draft pick quarterback. I can't say that. So, tell, okay, so you just hit on the point. So we this is January. Um, what, I don't even know what day it is. Um, we, the we recruit, uh, recruit, though, the recruiting cycles, you know, what we just had. And, you know, with the early signing right now, it throws my whole train of thought off. But for what we're bringing in this year, and you have to factor in what we lost in the portal, what we, we gained a couple in the portal, what does the spring outlook look like? Because we, you know, 
we know what we need to do. What does Hypo's next three or four months, what does it need to look like for us to get on track to being where we, you know, we need to go? Well, first and foremost, I think we need to serve savage the recruits that we got that's supposed to be coming in right now. Um, we did get some good guys um, that, that were in the transfer portal. Mm-hmm. Um, as you can hear that there's guys that are taking their name out of the transfer portal. Right. And to be honest with you, and I'm going to tell you like this here, I'm surprised that any of those kids are, are in the transfer portal just because of the fact that there's not any scholarships out there. I, I, that's, I'm looking at that too. It's I, like, how are they going somewhere else? They don't have scholarships exactly either. Exactly, because I truly feel sorry for the seniors in high school that don't have the opportunity that, that there's a chance that they won't have a scholarship to come to school because of this here whole situation where they're giving them an extra year. Now, back to your question, where do we go from here? I think we start from the bottom. And what I mean by that is we don't have one starter in spring ball if we have spring ball. I think everybody's going to have to earn their position, which I think they're going to have to anyway because of the new coach. Yeah. I don't think that there's anyone on our roster that can say that this is my position based off what I did last year should tell you that I'm the man to continue to go on with this position. I don't see anybody at all like that. Right. I, to your point, I don't think anybody, we're, we're not good enough as a team and just individual. And again, no disrespect to these young men. I won't say good enough. They're not accomplished enough to be able to just say it's going to roll over to the next year. So I do think in that healthy competition is going to create better, just, you know, better players individually and also better units and a better team if we do that. I, I think you, you get that when you change over uh, coaching staff too. You get an injection of everybody, kids that weren't getting a shot the last year or two, they feel like they have a fresh start and I'm going to go out there and prove myself. And I think that um, hopefully, again, creates some, some better competition and, and, you know, just better results for the kids. I'm with you on that, man. Hey, right, so I guess we need to go and wrap this up, man. We, hey, you know what we should do on the next show, man? Let's let's, let's get the fans involved a little bit more. And let's have a call in. Yeah, we say. can do a call in show. Easy. We want to hear from the fans. Well, well, let's, let, we may get that done tonight. Let's look at the schedule. Let's pull it together. Um, also, just looking for, I want to have a, a show. I want to get, get a couple guys, a little panel together. I want to talk about this portal with transfers and things of that nature. Recruit, I want to have a discussion about that. So, fans, you, you guys can look forward to that, too. But we're going we're gonna to talk about this. I want We want to hear from the fans and what you have to say. Sound off. I mean, don't let us scare you off of giving your honest opinions. We want to hear exactly what you have to say. We're going to tell you what we have to say about that and what you have to say, too. So, yeah, looking forward to that one. Antron says you don't want to hear the truth. <laughs> I want Antron to call. Like we, I want him to call in. I want to hear his truth. Your truth is your truth. Murfreesboro's finest. So, Riverdale. Shout out to Riverdale. <laughs> Love you, Antron. All right. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Like I said, we'll be checking in 